this lesson, we're going to introduce you to the basic underlying chord sequence that forms the structure of literally thousands of popular songs. The 12 Bar Blues uh, first made it into publication around about 1912, but it was almost certainly around a lot longer than that um, in live African-American um, folk music. Now, over the last hundred years or so, the 12 Bar Blues has formed the basics of uh, music from every genre, from rock and roll, jazz, blues obviously, right on through to, to modern heavy rock uh, and folk and country music as well. So if you're going to play with other musicians, um, sooner or later you're going to be expected to be able to jam along to a 12 bar. So you could almost say that the 12 bar blues is required learning for all guitarists. Now in later lessons we're going to explore some of the, the rhythmic devices that uh, really characterise blues. Um, stuff like um, bass lines, riff patterns, shuffle patterns, all that sort of stuff. But first off, we need to get familiar with the underlying chord sequences. So really that's where this lesson focuses. And we're going to kick off with what I refer to as the simple 12 bar blues form. You can see the first line is just all one chord, E7. And the second line is evenly split between two bars of A7 and then back to E7 for two bars. The last line is then simply split between B7 for two bars and back to E7. The best way to hear how these chord sequences work is to think of a, um, a simple blues, typical blues vocal line. So here's a little number I wrote called Dead Doggy Blues, a cheerful little number to just demonstrate how this works. You can strum along with me if you like. Three, four. Woke up this morning, my little doggy was dead. Woke up this morning, my little doggy was dead. So I buried my doggy, went back to bed. So the blues lyric almost works like the format for a standard joke. It's a statement, I woke up this morning, my doggy was dead. It's then repeated, woke up this morning, my little doggy was dead. Then there's kind of like a setup line, well I buried my doggy, and then a punch line, I went back to bed. And there's usually a kind of wry dark humour about blues lyrics. Um, so that helps you understand the actual sort of flow of the chords and the way the the sequence is structured. In blues, the way chords work together is slightly different from um, how it works in most other forms of music. One result of this is that the seventh chord and major chord in a lot of blues tunes are pretty much interchangeable. And that's something we can use right away as a means of sort of improvising a little bit on our chords. Something like this. We've got our E 7th chord either like that or with that extra note there, little D note at the 3rd fret on the 2nd string, and we've got our major chord with all three fingers on like that, and we can kind of just sort of interchange between these. Some on the A. There we've got A major, one form of A seventh you can play like that, the extra G note up there, or another form of A seventh just lifting that finger on to get the, the open G note here. So that 
that's something you can mess around with right away um, to add a little bit of interest. Next, we'll look at what is probably the most commonly used sequence in blues. You'll see it's a slight variation on the one we've just been over. You can see that the first two lines are just the same as our simple blues sequence. But we've made a couple of changes to the last line. There's only one bar B seventh and then straight back to A seventh, back to E seventh and then finishing up on B seventh. So there's quite a lot going on in that last line. So that last line, um, one bar of B seventh, A seventh, E seventh, B seventh. So let's just have a look at how this um, extra sort of slightly more dynamic last line supports the, the dynamic of the, the, the typical blues lyric again. So it's back to the dead doggy blues. Our first line is, is, is static if you like, nothing much happens, we just make our statements. Woke we'll up this morning, a little doggy was dead. Slight change of energy up to the second line, up to the A. Woke up this morning, so I'm really upset about this. A little doggy was dead. That's me. Then we get quite a strong sense of setup with the B7. Well, I buried my doggy. Then the A7 makes a little gap for the punchline. I went back to bed. And then the B7 acts as what we call a turnaround to bring us back um, to the next verse. I buried my doggy. I went back to bed. I woke up the next morning. We can see how that works. So that's what I call the common uh, blues progression of common 12 bar simply because it's probably the one you're going to hear the most often. Now thirdly we come to what I call the quick change 12 bar um, which is one that says that four bars is just too long a time to go on, on just one chord. Um, so that looks like this. You can see that we break up that first line by jumping to A 7th and back again to E. I've also marked out an effective use of the difference between E major and E seventh in the first and second line of this progression. So this change from um, E major to E seventh is what I call the heralding effect. When you're vamping away on a major chord and change it to a seventh, it kind of lets your audience know there's another shift coming, another change coming. See if you can hear this. So we're going E seventh. A seven. That's E major. E seven. That kind of sets us up for the main shift to A major on the next line. That's E major. And E seventh again. Building us up to the last line. See in the last two bars we've got a very busy looking progression um, which is what we call a, a turnaround progression um, often used just to sort of set us up nicely to come back into the next verse but also these are often used for intros as well at the beginning of songs you'll have heard this probably a hundred times before it's a bit of a cliche and it's E <laughs> E7th, A, A minor. Let's have a look at these chords. What these chords do is actually pick out um, a lead line um, which you can kind of hear the chords expressing that goes something like uh, So you can hear that in these chords. Really that's what it's doing. So that's a very useful trick to learn 
One of the great things about blues is how easily different bits of it fit together with other bits of it. So although we've looked at three different versions here, um, I could be playing one of these versions and you could play, be playing another and they would fit together reasonably well. Blues is very tolerant and that's why it's such a great medium to sort of jam with and improvise with. So I'm going to play out now with uh, a couple of verses of Dead Doggy Blues. So I'm sure you're dying to find out what's happened in the second verse. And um, you can join along with me. Whichever level you've learnt this at, whatever you got used to playing, play well within your comfort zone and just have a bit of fun with it. Okay, so here's the Dead Doggy Blues. And after that, I'll see you in the next lesson. <laughs> I woke up this morning, my doggy was dead. Woke up this morning, my little doggy was dead. So I buried my doggy. Out of bed. Woke up the next morning, my little doggy was still dead. Woke up the next morning, my little doggy was still dead. Yeah. And I buried my wife instead